Welcome Terry and Brad uh, to the programme, no strangers uh, to this building. Uh, before we talk about the sessions you recorded down here though, do you remember the first time you heard yourselves on the radio? Mmm, I'm trying to think. It would have been John Peel, yeah. I think. That's when, that's when it I It had heard. to have been John Peel. Yeah, yeah definitely. First time. Um, I've got a feeling I, I, I did hear it, it was probably Gangsters and I, I think I did hear it. Or maybe it was the second time yeah. here on the radio. Yeah. There was a Comgy Automatics thing on, wasn't there, as well, I think. Yeah. I believe. Yeah. I can't, I'm not absolutely sure of the date. Right. But I'll probably listen to that thinking, what's that all about? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I've never f fear fearing, fearful of the fact that I might wind up in it one day. Yeah. But, you know, well, because at, at that point, obviously, the endorsement of somebody like Peel, I mean, was, you know, apart from being on the cover or getting a single reviewed in a music paper, was pretty much as good as it got, wasn't it? it was, friends it was, friends it, would phone you up no, the next it, day. It, it was definitely alongside, uh, you know, covering the AME or something. And that was probably the goal. Yeah. Uh, anything beyond that you didn't really think about. Yeah. And, uh, you know, n n n you didn't think about Top of the Pops or, you know, it was. If you can get in the enemy, yeah. the, the, the enemy gig guide was a, a massive one. <laughs> <laughs> like um, you're playing Bridlington, and there you cut it out. You cut it out. But, um, the thing about Phil was, though, I mean, he'd break the band, wouldn't he? I mean, mm -hmm. he'd break you, yeah. he'd, you'd, you'd, yeah. well, in, the, in the nicest possible sense. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? And um, that that that's the uh, you know the whole event around the Rough Trade release of Gangsters and stuff like that. It was like all linked in with the Peel show in a yeah, way and yeah. it was great. Yeah, I absolutely. Because uh, from, from that, um, your first session, I'll look this up, your first session here, May 1979. Does anyone recall their first visit to Maid of I remember the canteen. I was six. <laughs> I was six. six. Huh? Yeah, that's a bit strange. Know, no, yeah. Terry couldn't have been here. I mean, yeah, okay. So. <laughs> no, I. Uh, the, mm. I mean, it, it's funny because like a trip to London then was a massive thing. It yeah, was like trying I, to get your van and yeah, it was a, it was like a holiday yeah. really to get out of Coventry for an hour. Passport, you know, yeah. use your passport. Um, but yeah, I, no, I, I just have w really weird memories of early trips to London and, y you know, when we uh, played with the Clash at the Music Machine, it was all around that period where y you didn't have hotels or in wash or anything and, uh, it, I, yeah, that's my fondest memory. Is that a fond memory? Yeah, it's a fond memory. Well, talking of, talking of hotels, the Kipriana Hotel in Camden. I remember that one. Remember that? Yeah, that was there. Uh, I remember sleeping in there and there was a hole in the floor where you could actually see who was checking in downstairs. If you sort of lit, if you rolled over to the right of the bed, you could just look out. Oh, that, that was luxury. Oh, he's back. That was luxury compared was, to yeah. rehearsal rehearsals because we used to rehearse at the Clash's place. Yeah. And they said we could sleep there if we wanted to, which I thought was beautiful. Um, it was like who could get on the flight case so you wouldn't get but seen by a rat. That, that Binley Oak rehearsal, yeah. though, where we were breaking the furniture up. To make a fire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cheers. Well, that was a good one as well. Uh, wearing mitts, you know, those mittens. Yeah. Because, <laughs> um, I mean, these obviously the glory days. I, I, I pictured that exactly as you're saying it, though. The, the, everyone, you know, these young teenagers in a van, like the Bash Street kids yeah. in a van yeah. coming to London. It was amazing. Yeah. It was absolutely amazing. And, um,. Does that still happen? It must still happen. Yeah. Young bands must get that. Yeah, I think so. It. Yeah, and uh, well, yeah, they've got an app great. for that now, haven't they? Yeah. They've got an app for that. They've got yeah. an app for yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. 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 for, yeah. for, for just, you know, breaking, breaking, breaking chairs up to make fire with that. No. But I mean, I mean, it's, 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 legendarily, I'm not sure if this is true because it's before my time at the BBC, obviously. But legendarily, the, all the engineers used to be famously grumpy at the time, as, as uh, Peel told it. And so you would turn up all excited, and a grumpy engineer would tell you where to put your all your Oh yeah, 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 and, and then off you go. Yeah, yeah, and you, you couldn't touch anything. <laughs> you couldn't even, the handle on the door to get in, you couldn't even touch that. It was, you had to wait for somebody to go in and then jump in after them. But, uh, the, yeah, it was very, very sort of like how you'd imagine the BBC to be at that point. Yeah. But then with somebody like John Peel involved, who yeah. would throw it, really. Yeah. Which, I mean, cause, uh, but it, did it suit the specials? It must have suited the specials in a way because you, you turn up and you, you don't have very long to do it, but it must have, you know, it must have brought out that live energy of the songs. It certainly sounds I like it. I think that's all we knew. We hadn't had studio experience at that point really and uh, so you'd turn up and play and, 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 you know, you didn't concentrate really on overdubs or how long have you got to do the vocal, you just turn up and play because you know you had three hours or something yeah. and, and then you had to go home. Um, that was like the album, doing the album yeah. took yeah. about three hours. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, 
Well, I mean, it, the, the point was, I think, if I remember rightly, we just toured and toured and toured, and then yeah. talking about the album, mm. coming down Fulham Palace Road, TW Studios, and places like that, which don't mm. exist anymore. But like, you'd just go in, you'd know it off by art, you know, it's all about doing it more or less, uh, yeah. you know, muscle memory and, and getting on with it. So we're pretty easy to accommodate, weren't we? Really yeah. for sessions yeah. and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> I checked the, um, the the first uh, the first session was Gangsters, Too Much Too Young, Concrete Jungle, and Monkey Man. Yeah. I think is the is right. And then none of which we're doing. No, I'm only joking. <laughs> <laughs> and then, um, but then you were back in. So that was May, October. You came back again, and then around the time of the second album. The month because that came out October the following year, and then you were right. back again for so three sessions within eighteen months. Yeah, pretty much says, you know how you know important I suppose this place was, you know, yeah. and how yeah. quickly your career was moving at that point. Uh, uh, too quick, sort of, really, mm. and uh, because you know you. you, you you, you grow up somewhere like Coventry, and you do slug around a bit, and you don't. Your expectations are very, very low, mm. and um, like you know the enemy gig guy thing. It's funny, but it's sort of true, really, and. Um, but then, t to release a record and for it to sell is just was just really weird. And but you sort of lose control a bit as well at that point. Mm. And because um, whether you like it or not, people are deciding your future mm -hmm. um, at labels and r radio stations that they decide whether they want to play you or not. And um, and, and touring as well. Yeah. And that all piles in on you. And, yeah. and, and it has its inevitable effect, or it did. Well, I suppose the strange thing is looking at it from your from your point of view as well. Um, I mean, we could see it happening in the playgrounds, but you must have seen it everywhere where you went because the I mean, judge you could judge how um, how big and quick that two tone movement arrived and spread through the country simply by the amount of adverts in the back of smash hits for clothes, a bit like the special two tone gear, the button badges. Yeah. All of a sudden, yeah. everyone looked like you. Yeah, and Paul Weller shoes. I remember that <laughs> in the back. I don't know if you ever wore them. <laughs> that, they weren't actually his shoes, yeah. but, um, um, <laughs> but yeah, it, it was. It, uh, but I think that was like on, from the, on the back of punk, where uh, teenagers became acceptable again, or teenagers found a voice again, mm. and so anything that came after that was a, a lot easier to yeah, it, to deal with. It's very much like that sort of what you haven't got now is that um, <clears throat> sort of subculture, mm. which is a pity. Um, and that, uh, the teenage crossover thing, I <clears> find really. Unbearable. It's like you're meant to hate things, right? You're mm. meant to love some things and hate things, but now everything's all right, you know. Yeah. It's like I find that distressing, really. Yeah. You know. One of the important things, I suppose, as well to mention is during this period, is um, you know, I mean, inadvertently almost. Well, well, partly it was, you know, in the makeup of the specials. But the specials arrived at a time where you know racism was a big issue. You know, it was a certain problem among certain quarters of the youth. And the special stand in the chart came at a perfect moment, really. Mm. Mm. Do you think? That, that particular issue is one that uh, is, I find it really difficult to, to deal with now. I'm in, I'm in my late 50s. It's like um, I get a bit angry, you know, mm. about, about the fact that it's, it's an ongoing situation. Mm. And I think what I don't, I honestly think it sh it's going to move up our agenda as far as we're concerned, like going forward next year. Mm. Make a bit more mm. uh, of a shout about this problem. Because this problem is um, tends to rear its ugly head at the time when you get a recession and, and everything else. They're there, you know. They come out the woodwork and mm. off we go. Well, mm. we're in a position where we can, you know, perhaps heighten some awareness about it. But you know, um, it's getting better in a lot of ways. But in other ways, it mm. really needs to be dealt with again. Mm. And um, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, so the Bash Street Kids of all those years ago. What was it like when you first got back together and walked? Because there were all there were rumours for years and years that you were going to do this, and you know ev ev every whisper would, you know, then fade away. But when you finally got back together in a rehearsal studio, was it like a school reunion? Uh, it was like the, the, the trials in Nuremberg, more more than a school reunion. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> It was no. It was, it was tricky because we, I think there were some crosswords said over the thirty-year period, and we had to put that to bed really, and that was difficult. Like, I don't hate you really. Do you know what <laughs> I mean? It was like, well, like, yeah. I mean, some of the guys had already been working in the nineties, so course, we, yeah. we, we sort of come along. I mean, Terry and I came along, and we hadn't actually been part of that, so um, it was, um, you know, um, e e probably easier for me and Terry to get on at that point than than. 
perhaps before, but we d we we never anticipated living in each other's worlds, particularly, no, did we? No. I mean, the idea of the specials is it's bigger than any of that. I mean, the whole concept is bigger than that. So, yeah, yeah. you know, we tend to we tend to sort of play to, um, you know, our, 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 well, merits, if you like, and that is performing and putting the message across. There's times when certain members aren't there. You know what I mean? Yeah. It, it, the whole point is the point is the point you yeah know what i mean yeah it's about our name really it's yeah. about our name and we're part of that uh, when we do this that's we're a part of the specials and uh that that's the important thing really and um being back in a studio tempted to start writing um not today <laughs> but um <laughs> go on knock yourself a song I don't know. It's like we're doing a tour in May, and we've got we've still got uh, sort of we've got new material and stuff, and we're working on lots of new ideas. And um, mm. you know, it, it's important to progress, but I also think um, you got to be careful what you do. You don't want to damage what you've done, really. Yes. And 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 you know, the nature of our band, which is a really sort of there are a lot of people in it and a lot of diverse opinions and ideas. And when we want to write a song about I don't know, a subject. We sort of tend to go off and do it on our own. Yeah. And, uh, um, you know, I think that's just how it works, really. Yeah, because I'd, I'd imagine, I mean, everyone grows up at a certain point where you're all hanging out with each other. You yeah. have a pretty similar sort of viewpoint on the world. That's why you're a gang. That's well, why a group gets together. Yeah. But as you grow and move away from each there other... There is that. But when we got back together, it was strange. It was like, um, I mean, I, I think some people get snapshots of themselves when they're at 19, 20, and they hold on to it and stuff like mm. that. But, I mean, this band seems to have still maintained its work ethic and everything that is right in my opinion about doing live music and that's no barriers with the audience and stuff like that Sorry, yeah. that never s didn't seem to go away i mean no, no. i suppose it's because we're from the midlands or i don't know yeah but it's it's definitely that and the thing about the material well you know i'm not averse to doing cover versions i mean we were probably one of the ultimate cover version bands in a way oh, the first the old album, days. Yeah. yeah first album was yeah um, and I mean, I know for a fact there's a couple of things, ideas Terry's got that are, I think are, are great. So we're going to, you know, move in those, move in that direction. I'm really excited about it, to be honest. Excellent. And uh, just very quickly, um, the highlight of your time back together again. I mean, those tour dates, even you know, for the first tour, the amount of friends who were phoning up saying, "I saw the specials the other night, and it was absolutely brilliant." And we obviously, notoriously, you know, you can play your poker face on a stage, but you must. You, there must have been times when you've been loving this. And no, I, I wouldn't be here, if, and that, that's the truth. And um, um, it, it's it's. You know, b because there was such a huge gap in between us, our, our last ever gig, which is what, 1981 or something, and now, um, I, I just feel different about it, and I feel like I've grown up, and we've all been through a lot of stuff, really, and um, it's it's a celebration of, of us being mates, I guess, and also, th you get that from the audience, it's like, you know, it, it's, it was such an important time for a lot of people, and... You know, it's pretty grim at the moment, and if you can just lose yourself for an hour or two, it's not a bad thing. You know, uh, I wouldn't take it as far as going to watch a Kevin Costner film, or <laughs> I wouldn't want to lose myself that way. Do you know what I mean? But it's uh, people come and they do, they 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 leave their stuff at the door, and yeah. we we celebrate, you know, a, a sort of music, and that's not a bad thing. And you can uh, lose yourself some more next uh, year if you'd like to go and see the, uh, the specials. There's new dates being added to the tour all the time. In fact, a couple of recent dates added in Belfast and Dublin. Uh, then it's on to Glasgow on May the 9th. You'll find all the details at uh, thespecials.com is the website address. Before all that, live here in less than an hour, the specials on Six Music. Thank you very much, boys. Cheers, Steve. Album.